They put me in the shelter for about two months. I got put in the, my other foster home when I was about 14. When we were leaving, the cop was telling me like to not let this affect me. It was like, your mom's not the greatest, but you're still a good kid. Did you do that presentation yet? Carlos has come a really long way, a really long way. He had a lot of, a lot of trauma, a lot of um, poor decisions on his part when he first came into the system. When we put out an emergency placement, we were expecting to get a group home because placement for teenagers is very, very slim. Sharon has opened her home to many children. She took in this 17-year-old with open arms, her and her husband, Kevin. Never taking in a teenager, there was a lot of phone calls to me in the beginning. Is this typical behavior? What kind of curfew should we give him? What freedom should we allow for him? They've worked very close with him. Going into their home, this is a child that didn't go to school, skipped classes a lot, maybe made some poor choices. He is a great kid. They saw that in him. They saw that he can be a really successful kid. Kevin drives him to school every single morning from North 47th, which is by Sherman Park, all the way to Oklahoma to Pulaski School, and then goes to work. Hey, do you want a haircut this week or do you want to wait another week? Get this week. You talked to your mom recently? Uh, not recently. She's the best sister for me, but I'm just like, yeah, not just like, just cause, not like for any particular reason. I remember the last day I was there, me and my friend David wanted to go to McDonald's to get breakfast. So I came home, like she had like these like wine coolers, something like that. And somebody drank them all and she was trying to blame it on me and my friend. Well, I like, I've been gone all morning and she was gone somewhere too. And, like it really made me mad that she was blaming me for it. Like I started getting an attitude with her. I remember she charged at me and she started like, it's my mom, I'm not gonna like defend myself. So I just like, I was like letting her and then she literally ripped like a, right here. She ripped out a patch of my hair and like that hurt a lot. All my stuff was like in a little basket. So like I put it, like I stuffed it all in a hoodie and then like wrapped it up and then I just left. After I left, I started getting into contact with like all of my mom's old friends because they really were like family. They told me stuff that I didn't even remember. Like she said, they said when I was young and we'd be bad, my mom would spray air freshener in our faces. They told us like about all these crazy things that she would do to us that I don't even like remember her doing. Right now I feel the most comfortable here. When I'm just with the family, it's awesome and it's chill, but like, I don't know when we're out, other people are seeing me with them. It's like, you can't just tell I don't belong there. Like, to me, they talk funny, and I bet to them I talk funny. Foster dad took me to see one of his friends, like just them hanging out. The dude that was moving almost forgot his wife's wedding dress. And then one of the friends was like, oh, dude, she would go nuclear. I'm like, what is that? Sunday is the only day I spend time with him, the only day I see him. You know, you would think they'd probably try to make it special or something, but they don't. It's just like a normal day. And that's not a problem with me at all. You know, that's what I like prefer. But like, if I, like I can come downstairs whenever I want. I can be a part of this whenever I want. I just got my driver's permit, but I don't drive yet. They got my birthday wrong. It says May 5th, but it's May 15th. We didn't anticipate um, what this might look like years down the line. We didn't think we'd adopt three kids, but you know, every time our license is up for renewal, we, we think we're not done. We've got more to give. Um, you know, we love being foster parents. We love being a foster family, and it's really become who we are, and it's made all of our kids who they are. So Ryan and Aiden are our biological sons, and Nyla, Judah, and Elliot are all adopted from foster care, and then Carlos is our foster son. But allowing Carlos to get to know us 
it was a different process. But he's he's a great, great kid, and he's you know gone through a lot, just like a lot of our kids in care have, but he's gonna make a difference in the lives of other kids because of what he's experienced. So to be able to be a part of his life in this kind of crossroads time for him has been kind of been our honor to be a part of. Carlos struggling with his parents not wanting to be involved, his dad being incarcerated. He took it internally and he is now releasing, just letting go of some things and saying this is my future. All right, do we get to see the, your presentation? So it says, ambition is the strong desire to do or achieve something usually includes hard work and determination. It says role model. Someone I very much admire is my social worker, Katie Picago. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Carlos. She's currently a social worker for Children's Hospital with three boys. So I guess the main reason is because of the social workers I've had before. Katie is my fifth and current worker. Ones I've had before acted like they knew me, knew I was a bad kid, so they treated me like it or they were cool but were never really helpful. They weren't there when I needed them to be there. That's what makes me grateful for Katie. She helped me with everything I need her to in the best way she could every time. I could have ended up in bad places because of the things that I did and because of her, I didn't. That's why I wanna be a social worker. The fact that one fifth of my workers has helped me in this way is sad to me. So I wanna be a social worker like Katie. Being in the system can make you feel alone and it is really hard. I want to do what Katie has done for me and make sure children in the system know the worth of their own life. Carlos, that's really amazing. Thank you. But I'm more impressed by the goals that you have because being a foster child isn't easy. He will be the very first client of mine to age out. He's going to be a kid that's going to check in with me. I hope so. Um, because I'd like to see where Carlos goes with this life. Right. <sighs> see ya. Friday, Saturday. Good uh, week. Uh, it's a be good. <laughs> Still chasing time